My name is Sharon Quinn, and I'm also known as the original Runway Diva, and you are watching Model Behavior. Class is officially in session. Today, my guest lecturer is Maria McDonald, who launched a global career that has spanned two decades and three continents in beauty, fashion, and film. She is also the founder and chair of Couple Girls for Change, spotlighting models, reunions, red carpet charity contributions, and innovative events, along with the model's messages of then, when, and now. Welcome, Maria McDonald, to Model Behavior. Thank you. Beautiful. How are you? I'm very good, Sharon. All right, so let's jump right into it. You know, I told you in the dress room, I'm a big fan of yours, but I'm also a big fan of your sisters, yeah. Jerusha and, Sue. and Susie. They were plus-size models. You guys, I'm going to work on getting them here, because if you know anything about the history of the plus model in, uh, in America, these are two names you should know. But I'm, I digress. Welcome, Maria. <laughs> Thank you. So, let's talk about you. How did you get your start? Now, you, you had this career to span three decades and continents and all of that. Where did you get started at? Well, I actually was born and raised in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know I was a teenage mother at 16. So, my son has been around throughout everything you've ever seen me in. So, is Jerusha. Jerusha's daughter, my sister, the large size model, is okay. six months. She's six months, uh, her daughter's six months younger than my son. So we were teenagers and we both, I got pregnant first. I had just won Miss Black Teenage Nevada at 15. Come to New York. I know, stuff you don't know, right? You see my mouth wide open. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so I went back to, to uh, Vegas after coming to New York for the Nationals. I, I lost. Anyway, went back, got pregnant, first boyfriend, first love, first everything, first, bam. I know, right? Okay. And Jerusha is 11 months, oh, let me tell you Sue, Jerusha, and I. Sue's born in January, Rusha's born the following year in February, and I'm born the following year in January. So. Your mama was a player. I know, so we're like triplets. So when I got pregnant, and, I, and of course I got a lot of trouble, Jerusha decided that she didn't want me in trouble by myself, so she got pregnant. Are you kidding? After me, yeah. So our children are six months apart, same age, same year. And so anyway, so this is how it all started. <laughs> <laughs> so what ended up happening is my mother's a diva and she doesn't play. She's like know. Dr. Phil when she says it, she says it once. And so anyway, she uh, said bye-bye and we had to start our life. All of us had to make it. Me, Sue, Rusha, all of us. Yeah, she didn't play. Okay, or so wait, did you just say? I got kicked out. She kicked you out the all right, mother. Okay. I know. Both of y'all? Well, Jerusha wanted to leave. Jerusha always has been a little advanced and wanted to get out into the world very quickly. So then, so she forced I'm the you. I one got kicked out. It's like, no, that's not what we were doing. That's not what we do. She doesn't play. So what She's did you do? Houston. I called my oldest sister, which we kind of talked about off camera, and asked, could I go over there? And I was laughing so hard. I was like, mama, kick me out. Can you believe it? She's like, no, what happened? Anyway, my oldest sister was 19, so I went over her house. And we started from there. Then Jerusha and I would stick together, take turns babysitting. Sue went on the road at 15. She's known Audrey Smalt since she was 15. She was in Ebony Fashion Fair. She was the bride. I know. <laughs> okay. So she was 15, 16, already gone into the world. Sue traveled the world as a dancer. She's the first black showgirl on the strip in Follies Berger in Las Vegas. I'm going to need you to stop. Okay, Susie, I need you to come on the show. <laughs> I'm coming to L.A. to get this interview. I'm letting you know right now. So... Not only was she the first showgirl in Las Vegas, Follies Berger, and traveled the world dancing and stuff, so I saw her doing that even before I got kicked out, even though she's only two years older. She also, in Ebony Fashion Fair, mm -hmm. she was the model, but also she was discovered by Giorgio Moroda. You know who that is? Yes! He had her. The music producer. Donna Summers and Irene Cara. So she got discovered. Sue has a number she one sings? album. Yes, called Harmony. It's a platinum album. If you try to buy it today, it's hundreds of dollars to try to purchase this album. So she actually got discovered, traveled to Cannes Festival. See, our lives are... Oh, wow. I know. That's why I want to get the stories when I said then, when, and now the models. So much is unsaid about the journey, right? So this is the story behind the faces in magazines. That's what I want to capture with the models' stories, uh, messages. So anyway, uh, yeah, she was discovered by Giorgio Moroda and... You know who Marissa Berenson is? Yes. Okay. 
married to, uh, was she a baroness? Anyway, she actually styled Sue and everything. It was within a week. They cut her hair, got her clothes, sent her to cons, traveled around the world, and really, really promoted this thing. After that one album, she didn't want to do it anymore. So in 2010, they did a tribute to Sue, uh, Georgie Marotta, and everybody else, 2010 in Vanity Fair. You said it was a platinum album. Platinum. Ooh, and la, she didn't want to do it anymore? She didn't want to. She didn't want to deal with the music industry. Sue's been quite lucky all her life. So to be Follies Brugere, she never was a dancer. Sue could say, I, I'm a dancer, show up and audition and get a job. Okay. And travel around the world. She's always been like that. She's been lucky like that. She goes to Chicago from Las Vegas and say, okay, I'm going to be with Ebony Fashion Fair. She ends up the bride. Okay. We're not having a Susie McDonald interview right now. I know. I want to talk about you. So what happens <laughs> is with me getting kicked out, these are my sisters right before me that I'm watching. So with me going right in line, I'm just showing you the uh -huh. type of raising we had. Mm -hmm. It was no joke. My mother did not play. I... So <sighs> consequently, uh, right after that thing goes, um, when I do um, my turn, I get kicked out. I have to decide right away, what do I want to do, what I want to become. So I started researching in Vegas, all of the stuff, like where did the models, how do they, you do a career, how does this whole thing work? So I ended up finding out that a lot of the cover girls were in with an agent in Los Angeles called Nina Blanchard. I know that name too. Okay. And so I went to Nina Blanchard and the first time that I went there, to, I just showed up, knocking doors down and stuff. And they let me sit there for two hours and said, after two hours, why are you here? I was like, I want to be a model. They were like, this is not the day we interview. Protocol, right? <laughs> you have got to go away and come back on a Wednesday. And I had to go back to Vegas, which is a five hour drive. Yes, I've had that drive. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Through the desert. Right? Mm -hmm. So I had to go back to Vegas. I went back on a Wednesday. And then when I came on a Wednesday, and they had, of course, all the models and stuff in there, I ended up seeing the lady again. And she said, um, you know, Nina. She looked at me and got really, really close. Pull your skirt up. Black girls have big thighs. By the way, I've got my quota of black girls and they're working but i have a hunch about you <laughs> come back in two weeks <laughs> <laughs> so i come back in two weeks again make that drive again and this time i'm meeting eileen ford so i walk back in and every it's only like five girls this time i'm the only black girl in there and i'm just watching all the blondes swing their hair going i can't wait to get to new york you know whatever so i'm sitting there and i had one little picture a little eight by ten picture that was horrible and Nina Blanchard said, you know, that picture that you have, don't show that to anybody. But I was so scared. It was the only thing I had. My turn to go in to see uh, Eileen Ford, you know, one by one. Mm -hmm. So I ended up in going. She stayed on the phone. So I just sat there while she just talked to New York and don't wear your father's jacket and blah, blah, blah. After she finished her conversation, she hung up and she said, so what is your name? I said, Maria McDonald. She said, where are you from? I said, Las Vegas. She said, you got a picture. And, it, and Nina had told me not to show. I just said, here. I showed it to her, she looked at it and put it down. She said, okay, so Vegas, right? I said, yeah, she said, good. That's where you're from, right? She said, good, go back there. So I stood up, I know, <laughs> I know. So I walked to the elevator and I was going to the elevator. Jerry came out, her husband, and said, this girl's gonna work, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, cause I have to make it cause I'm trying to raise a son now, mm -hmm. I got a baby. So anyway, um, I go back, to, she says, Nina Blanchard comes and says, after John, uh, what's his name says that, uh, Eileen Ford's husband. She says, come back in two weeks. Looks like my what, fourth, third, fourth time. Move to um, Los Angeles, whatever. So I go to Vegas, I gotta make arrangements for someone to watch a little bitty baby, and uh, which is my sister again. I got, you know, Paula Sue, I got three sisters I'm asking to help me with these transitions. And I come back to New York, and when I get back to New York, sleeping on floors, you gotta do couch tours, right? Or wherever you can go. These girls don't know about this. They uh, don't know about the hustle like this. Right, uh, it's a journey, right? Wow. And so I ended up uh, going, like, uh, I was sitting there for like a week and nothing was going on. And I happened to bump into Von Gretchen Shepherd. You know who that is? No, that's a new one for me. Von Gretchen Shepherd. Von Gretchen. Von Gretchen Shepherd was, um, you know, Kiki. Um, Kiki Shepherd is her sister uh, from Apollo. Yeah, the I know that, who Kiki Shepherd. Okay, this is her sister, mm -hmm. and and she's incredibly famous, famous model. And I said, how do you get work here in Los Angeles? She said, you got to get it yourself. Go to your agent, ask for their client list, and call everybody and ask them to take your picture. So I did, I didn't know. So I asked for the client list and I just called everybody, would you take my picture, would you take my picture? And I'd rush and run and try to get them to do, build a portfolio. Mm -hmm. 
one person, I made a mistake. I mean, uh, thank God. I called Claude Mijon and I said, can you take my picture? You know, because my, 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 my motivation was my son. Mm -hmm. Make a life for us. Anyway, um, so Claude Mijon said, if you can get here in 15 minutes, let me see you in 15 minutes. So I drove from the valley. Who knows? It probably took 15, 20 minutes. But I got to Claude Mijon. I got there. He said, more than taking your picture, what I'm going to do, I'm actually booking for uh, a job. He booked me right away because he liked me. And the job happened to be with every New York top cover girl. Mm. I know. <gasps> really? I know. And all of them were be being flown in to Los Angeles to shoot this catalog. I was probably the only girl from Vegas. I mean, from L.A. So the day that we actually go shoot, I don't know how to model. I don't know how to do anything. We had to do jump shots. I was stepping all over other people's lit feet and stuff. Anyway, uh, so I get there the day of the shooting. He said, so you said your agent is Nina Blanchard, right? I was like, yeah. He said, I called to book you. They said they didn't know who you were. Stop playing. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> really? Absolutely. So anyway, we did the booking. They got their percentage, right? And so from then on, I kept on going to get my jobs. There's another girl I saw at a, uh, outside on a street thing, and she was like, you know what? They're interviewing for, um, I forgot the name of this TV show, so I got my first TV show from outside at a little buying stuff off the street. We went to this interview. She told the people, because <laughs> they said, oh, we like her, me. And she said, okay, I tell you what, but we come together. So if you're going to book her, you have to book me. So she got a booking off my back, but what can I say? She knew about it, and we just went in together. I was learning stuff quick, right? Wait, but I, I want to stop you, because you said something that, that stood out to me a minute ago. You said that you had to continue getting your own gigs. Absolutely. So you, were, you, were, you had agency representation, but they weren't really representing you. That's right. How, okay. Okay, keep going. I'm going to come up with some more questions, because this is... Okay. How do you have somebody call? How do you deny that the person is with you? They didn't remember me. I just got with them. They were like, I don't know. Anyway. Okay. But again, the motivation, I have a son. I don't have time to play with all these other things gotcha. and get gotcha. self-absorbed mm -hmm. in these nonsense. So, and, and the girl gave me the information. I mean, Von Gretchen Shepard. Anyway, so from there, uh, I think I did start being sent out on stuff because now they're collecting commissions or whatever. And I got my, my first um, commercial was from McDonald's. Maria McDonald does a commercial for <laughs> McDonald's, right? So I did that, and then I had a Max Factor cosmetic ad, and then uh, album covers were really. So it just started to, to it come started to after click. that first. Once you get that exposure, you know they start mm -hmm. to call and stuff. So I worked really diligently for nine months, built an incredible portfolio. Walked into Nina Blanchard and said, um, Jerry and them said, get me ready for New York. When can I go? They said, oh, you could have been there. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so they get up the phone and they call <laughs> Eileen Ford, right? Hold up. Okay. Wait, I need a minute to process that. Okay, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. And they call Eileen Ford and say, remember the girl that you met, the light-eyed girl that you met here in New York? Well, you know, we wanted her to be able to come to, you know, to, I mean, that you met in Los Angeles that we wanted her to be able to come to New York. She said, I don't remember her. I know. Anyway, they, whatever, anyway, they end up talking to her, and then she said, okay, that was a Friday. She said, have her be in New York by Monday. So I packed everything up, went back to uh, Las Vegas. I think it was my son's birthday that weekend. I had to miss it. I flew to New York. It was raining, and I didn't know about tennis shoes. I'm a West Coast girl, so we always have on heels and stuff and cars, right? I came here, it was raining. I almost started falling in the rain and stuff. I go to see Eileen Ford, and that day she started sending me on, um, no, the next day I had 10 appointments a day. Five days a week. Did she remember you? From no. <laughs> she just sent me right into what they do. You know, you make it or break it. And I didn't know what was good or bad, if you were doing good. My first job was with Christy Brinkley and them. I didn't know. I just thought it wasn't consistent enough. It wasn't, it wasn't every single day, you know. And so I went to Wilhelmina, and I saw her in person. Right? That's my agency. Yeah. Right? And I said, I don't know if I'm doing good. Would you represent me? Blah, blah, blah. She said, yeah, I'll take you. I said, but I'm under contract with Eileen Ford. She said, I'll take care of it. So I stayed with Wilhelmina from that day until the very last day of my career. Which was? Um, it's, it, I always say 80s, but it's really like 91, 92. Now, when you were modeling, as you know, I told you I was a fan of, of your, the work you did on Miami Vice. We still watch Miami Vice to this day. Of yeah. course, it probably has it on now. Yeah. But 
Did you do that while you were with Wilhelmina or did that come after? I did it while I was with Wilhelmina because one of the things I did when I, when I decided to do something, it's no joke, I'm not playing with anybody. So not only did I do modeling, I went to school at night with Lee Strasberg. And I actually started while I was in LA. As soon as I got the McDonald's commercial, I was studying with the method immediately in wow. Los Angeles. I got a job in 20, 20th century. I lived in a tree house where you walk on the floor and it crack. Lucian was crying. You live like, in a tree you? house? Yeah, I don't care. We, we're making it. Me and my son, I don't care. We're making it. Period. End of story. Yeah, it was like a tree house. Everybody remembers it's like famous. They're like, this is the tree house. Remember the tree house? But anyway, I lived there and my son went to, to little nurseries and mm -hmm. kindergarten and stuff like that. But that's the nine months where it's like urgency. Mm -hmm. We're getting to New York, we're going, period, mm -hmm. end of story. So, yeah, that's the um, Los Angeles piece of it. Mm -hmm. On to New York, you're hearing about the doors, you know, there. Mm -hmm. And then again, stand with Wilhelmina all that time. So, as soon as I got to New York, I was going to acting school at night here, too. Wow. So, I actually met Lee Strasberg himself and his wife. And so, I studied from then until today. You still? I'm a method actor. Are mm. you really? Absolutely. So, absolutely. So, the 2010, we okay. yeah, we did um, Loxburgh Lotion on Broadway. You know, they asked me to do that, which is the original streetcar named Desire. And it was right before, this was the treatment he did. So, Loxburgh Lotion, I would be, it's interesting, because shortly after that, Broadway was doing it with Blair Underwood in mm -hmm. it. But, yeah, I'm a method actor, trained. Okay, I don't want to run out of time before I get to it, so I'm just going to throw it out there. Tell me about Cover, Cover Girls for Change Cover Girls for and Change. how that came about. Cover Girls for Change, there started being model reunions in 2010 here, here in New York, mm -hmm. and you may have even seen Oprah did the supermodels reunion. So it was just like the zeitgeist. It was everywhere. Mm -hmm. I went to the one with the girls from Europe, because I did the Europe collections and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I went to the one there and saw all the girls and I heard their stories, like stuff you're hearing from me that mm -hmm. you didn't know about. I was like, wait a minute. You guys, we gotta, we're doing all this private stuff. We gotta open this up and wrap it around charities. Mm -hmm. So we need social justice. You've got Angelina Jolie, you've got Bono in the music industry. Name the voices of social justice and social good in, in, in fashion. I'm listening. Nothing. So we're not at the, the global table. There's no conversation. And we're a part of that. Also in 2008, I found a friend. I know the stories can go on, but I have this. No, that's written. okay. Please go ahead. I have this story written. We, we have a book, and I have a book and a film treatment written on all of this. My life is called Mom and My Up. That's the book. I mean the movie. And then the other piece is this one that I, I I found a friend in 2008 who had been in prison. I mean, I found him on the internet. My son did, and discovered he had been in prison for 20 years. So I pushed the. His, I, I read that in your bio. You got it. Yes. So this is what gave me the social justice piece. Mm -hmm. I'm like, because I went to D.C., I've done panels in D.C., all kind of, uh, yeah. So, you know, the uh, uh, Obama's clemency project, mm -hmm. that hadn't even come into play, but I was a part of that as well, and getting people out of, oh, yeah. So I know, so you don't know these <laughs> I stories. I know none of this. None of these stories behind the models. This is what I want to be able to capture with Cover Girls for Change. Fashion and philanthropy, social justice, criminal justice, building social good portfolios for the models. They need to now have content and credibility, not just uh, these social networks and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. There needs to, they need to become a part of the global conversation. Cover Girls for Change is a movement. This isn't a moment I say you cherish and tuck mm -hmm. away like a magazine. No, we've got a lot to say and we've done a lot. We've got a lot of um, mileage. And how does one get down with that for lack okay, of Okay, number words. one, to be a part of Cover Girls Change, you have to be a cover girl, period, end of story. And for other people, we're open for collaborations, for sponsorships, and that sort of thing. Uh, we're in conversation with a, for a lot of opportunities that way, and, you know, whatever we, that may take us. But as far as the public goes, it would be a part of the contributions and that sort of thing. They can attend our events. And what kind of cover does it have to be? Because you could, you know, you could be on the cover of Juicy Booty magazine. No. That's, <laughs> I'm just saying, what kind of cover is it supposed These to be? These are recognizable <laughs> covers. These are superstars, icons. It'll be everybody that you recognize from the 70s, 80s, till this very day. That's the only ones we'll deal with. Okay. You got plus sizes and well, you got suits. all sizes. So come on. You get, it doesn't you it. matter the size. You just have to be have a cover, cover girl. girl, which means for to me, if you're a cover girl, you pay the price. To me, you've done what I've done. You slept outside. You did what you needed to do. You went to Europe with forty dollars and stayed six months. Come on, church. Hello. And if you haven't done those, you can't break through being a person, a normal person, into the main arena unless you paid some dues. Mm -hmm. And that's every industry. 
So consequently, I'm only interested in that group of people mm -hmm. because they're the only ones that can turn around like you're doing with model behavior and you have something to share mm -hmm. that's very valuable. So the only one that loses are those that don't listen. But Say that again, please. The Say only ones that lose are those that don't li listen. There's not 20 ways to make it. There's one. And so what I make it available and what you're doing with model behavior is we're making the one way information available. That is unheard of. No one's going to give you the information to build a career. So consequently, my stories and this valuable platform that you're making available to everybody, this is incredible for you guys. Other than that, you just stay on the peripheral going round and round in circles. Ooh, ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> She just preached to y'all just now. I hope y'all writing this stuff down. But one of the things I do have for the no, public. No, you got time. Go ahead. Say what you got to say. One of the things that I came across, right, in order to be able to help empower people, the biggest thing beside being on wrong tracks and not listening to have a career or whatever that your dreams, what stands in the way for most people is survival. How do you pay your bills? How do you do this? And you don't necessarily want to get off track and go get a job that's giving your time away. So I actually, in 1995, partnered with a company that's incredible. All the products are from Europe, mm -hmm. and a lot of the celebrities use it, and people can have their own business. So I mentored that way, too. I built that from 1995 as well. So that, for the public, I have available. You can generate this part-time income. You can generate the same amount of income that uh, the industry makes. You have royalties. So I'll actually teach and train and mentor you on actually how to be your own brand ambassador, how to be your own boss, and how to be in control of your life. That's it. So that bridge is taken care of. You don't have to worry about the finances. It comes in the mail just like it does for models and actors. You have your own botanical boutique. Green is where everybody's moving. Mm -hmm. So you have your own at-home spa. So you use your products. You actually make money from your products, residual income, and go about your dreams. So kind of just make it available as you are. Take away any excuses for anything that you want to do in your life. And so what I have found is, yeah, those who are paralyzed or whatever it is that they're doing with the information and not really acting on it, you know, mm -hmm. the fear is holding them back. The tools are here. I see you're making available. I'm making pieces available. And so couldn't get any simpler. Wasn't that for us? So tell me how you how they find you so I can put that up on the screen as you're saying it. Actually, email me and in the just put Maria McDonald, you know, mm -hmm. or, uh, or yeah, put Maria McDonald in the subject line. Maria Sop at Yahoo.com. You have a website for Cover Girls for Change? Again, I'm very, very right. undercover with Cover right, Girls for right, Change. Right. It'll take you to Facebook. So, so we're kind of really picky on how we're exposing ourselves for Cover Girls for Change because it, it ends up being bombarded. We mm -hmm. do do, we did do events, but I don't want to make that public. Okay, I got yet. you. I got, but you know, a, a question popped in my head while you were talking because you could see the passion. And, well, not even the passion. You had a sense of urgency because you had the baby That's that right. you had to take care of. That's right. So, do you think that your your the sense of urgency would have been there? had the situation been different and you didn't have the baby? No, I would have never left Vegas. I wanted to be a lawyer. I was going to go to school because I was a good student. Yeah. So I would have gone to school never, ever, ever. I'm not like Sue and Jerusha. I'm more of a homebody. I love being home, reading and writing and that sort of thing. So, no, absolutely not. I would be in Vegas right now, period, end of story, practicing law. No, you wouldn't have. Oh, you yes, think you would have, but you wouldn't have. You no, I would have. I would have. <laughs> no, I would have. No, I would have. I think something would have pushed you. This is what pushed me. But I got if it hadn't been that, it would have been something else. <laughs> but how old is your son now? My son is 40-something mm. years old. I have a, um, yeah. I'm sorry to keep shocking you. Again, you don't know these stories, right? <laughs> right. And I have a granddaughter who is raised in Paris. Yeah. And she's 18. She sings and every, I know. See? Okay, I got to. I've Jerusha been sitting this whole time with my four, mouth open. Rusha has four grandchildren. Her daughter's six months younger, and her daughter is six months younger than my son. So, yeah, we're not playing. We're done with a lot of stuff. We, like, move. Okay, got another question Sue had you. none. Your mom is still, is she still with you? I just lost her in 2013. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But to see the fruits of your labor, she must have been so proud of you. Well, her, you memorial, her memorial, we actually, they recorded it. And everybody showed up. They were like, if you don't want to grow, you didn't want to be around her mother. So it's all these people who came out the woodwork that she mentored and actually impacted. She's very quick, no joke. My mother sang opera, Marian Anderson. 
My mother is valedictorian. She was brilliant, brilliant, wow. brilliant. I know she was educated, very academic, very, yeah, no joke. So, and my aunt Margie, I have an aunt who looks like Lena Horne and she modeled from Vegas and Esquire and stuff when we were young. So it's a whole story. It'll be a mom and my up in the book, you guys, and hopefully we're gonna. No, I'm bringing all film. three of the McDonald's sisters <laughs> back on my show. Okay, this is fascinating. Mom to and me. my up. So it'll all be in there. That's where you get the backstory. But again, cover girls to change and the voices and the platform that you're doing. These are the stories that need to be told. Absolutely. Thank you. With the faces you recognize. Absolutely. This is what you don't know. Because I, I still work in fashion um, casting, and when I tell you they don't know. Wow. They don't know. Absolutely. The pictures that come across, I'm just like, what is this? And I say, just what Eileen, well, I mean, what uh, Nina Blanchard said to you, was one, and she got offended when I said it. I said, don't give this picture to anyone else. Thank don't you. Don't show it to anybody else. Yeah. So yeah. This is a terrible picture. Yeah. So do you want to know why you're not working? This is why you're not working. Yeah. Don't give anyone those pictures. They don't, and, and they'll show up next year at the same casting and give me the same stupid picture, the same one. See it all the time. So it's definitely necessary what you're doing, and I, I appreciate you for, for what you're doing. I can't wait to see. Hopefully, I'll get an invitation because yeah, to so the events because uh, I absolutely. know they're going to be fly. I want to be there so yeah. I can. Uh, what's the word? Uh, when you know how you act when you see people that you've you've idolized your whole life and you're meeting them for the first time. So I'm just gonna I'm a fan out. That's what I'm gonna do. Dang. So before you go, you give them give them a couple words. Leave the models with something, a piece of advice. You've already given so many really great bits of advice. You information. mean the up and coming ones? Yes. Listen. Start to listen, okay? <laughs> when you recognize a face, and if someone is generous enough to give you information, really take it in. It's very valuable. We're never going to chase you down for you to have a career that you want. What you want to do is listen and recognize when an opportunity has come before you, like model behavior right here. So you want to be able to tune in and get these nuggets and understand. The other people are not going to tell you all these names and all the people that you guys are doing your um, photos from and looking at whoever, Kardashian's name or Rihanna. They will, you'll see for yourself, at, try to get close enough to ask for advice on how to start. It's not happening. So again, model behavior, when the opportunity is there, listen, take it all in, and apply it. Other than that, it means nothing. That's oh my, my story. Oh, my God. I love you. <laughs> all right, guys, we are just about out of time, but I want to thank my guest, Maria McDonald, for sharing all of that industry knowledge with us. Now, before I go, as always, I want to leave you with a few thoughts. I want you to remember that you can't change the game until you first learn the game. Always surround yourself with positive people and positive things. Do what you love and love what you do. And lastly, be who you are, but be who you are tastefully. Always have some class about yourself. Now don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. And if you missed an episode of Model Behavior, now you can, pu you can view all of the previous episodes on our YouTube channel. Just Google Model Behavior with Sharon Quinn and all of the previous episodes will come up. Thanks for watching Model Behavior, guys, and I'll see you all next week. Class is officially dismissed. Bye, y'all.